G'day and welcome to Syrovod. I'm Glenn Paul. As you've probably figured with the dish sitting behind me there, I'm at CSIRO's Parks Observatory on what is a rather windy day, which is going to make things a little bit scary because we're going to go up onto the dish. We're fortunate today that the dish is not actually doing any observations, so we can take our camera equipment inside the dish for a look around. It was only going to be a small window of opportunity while the receiver was being changed. Receivers are changed because each operates at a different frequency, so when you change between research projects, you need to match the receiver to suit the work a particular scientist is doing. We were told we'd have about an hour or so to have a look around the dish while the technicians completed their work. Normally you wouldn't be able to take a video camera inside because the dish is so sensitive that the small amount of radio emissions generated by the electric motor inside the camera could interfere with the telescope. But before we took the tour, I thought it best if we find out a bit more about the dish. So I asked Research Projects Officer John Sarkissian why the dish is so good at doing what it does. There are several reasons why the dish is so good at discovering pulses and other objects too. And um, one of the main reasons is our location in the world. The centre of the Milky Way passes directly overhead from this location. And so the richest and most interesting parts of the, the Milky Way galaxy are accessible to us there. They're directly overhead and we see them at their, at their best and, and the strongest, if you like, and, and we're able to do um, world-leading radio astronomy with the telescope. It certainly looks impressive sitting there in the field and I was keen now to emulate the actors who portrayed CSIRO staff in the Apollo 11 mission movie, The Dish. Well, it probably is the world's most expensive ride, but here I am sitting on the dish and we're going up. And it's going to be quite a view, no doubt. I feel a bit like a character out of the uh, Dish movie where Sam Neill was sitting in this exact same spot overlooking the uh, sheep paddocks, as you can see beyond me there. The ride up provides a great view, but you soon realise as the outer edge of the dish rises, you're no longer sitting looking down at your feet, so you have to remember to turn around if you don't want to find yourself rolling backwards down into the centre of the dish. Well, here I am on top of the dish. All I need now is my cricket bat and ball and I can recreate the entire dish movie scene. But no time for cricket today. The CSIRO technicians still had work to do above on the receiver and were preparing for the climb upwards. So here on top of the dish, obviously we're about 40 metres above the ground and it's a bit windy and a bit rainy and also a bit scary as the dish tends to vibrate a little bit here and there. And uh, at any time you just feel like you're going to fall through it and end up down there on the ground somewhere. But of course, that was all in my mind. The structure itself is actually very strong and the CSIRO staff who work here aren't bothered at all by walking around on it. With the technicians continuing their work above, we weren't going to get a nice easy ride down on the dish, so it was through the hatch and onto the ladders. This would take us through the heart of the original structure. If you think this looks like the inside of a battleship rather than a radio telescope, well you're not far off. The company that built this section also specialised in ships and submarines. A few more ladders and we run to the lattice work of the 300 ton dish. to the ground. It certainly is an impressive radio telescope and has achieved much since its opening back in the early 60s. But with that in mind, what of its future? The telescope was um, commissioned back in October 1961. But when it was built, it was only intended to, to have a life of about 20 years or so. The fact that we've almost more than double that is, is quite amazing and the reason for that of course is because we've continually upgraded the telescope over the years so that today the telescope is 10,000 times more sensitive than when it was built and that's allowed astronomers to continue to use it to make great discoveries to do great science and to remain at the very forefront of world radio astronomy. The future of the telescope is, is quite bright because there'll still be a need for an instrument like this. Um, and again, because of our location in the world, the fact that we see the most interesting parts of the Milky Way overhead and so on, uh, means that we'll probably have many more years of, of productive life ahead of the telescope. Um, the next generation radio telescopes that the, the, the radio astronomy community is, is planning will be many, many times larger than, than the Parkes telescope in terms of surface area and, so, and sensitivity. Um, but nonetheless, this telescope will still have uh, a, uh, an important um, role to play in radio astronomy and in, in the research that we do. So we're hopeful that this telescope has, has many more years of productive life ahead of it still. 
So that's the famous dish, and if you'd like to find out more about the work that goes on here at Parks, just check out our website at www.csiro.au.